My first involvement with Stronger Lodis um, was not in 1973. I came to um, Arnhem Land uh, just to do voluntary work for 12 months and um, arrived at a place called Milligimbi in central Arnhem Land. An old man uh, started to get um, strange markings on the bottom of his feet and uh, people weren't sure what it was about. All the staff that, uh, that were on the community at the time were confused. Uh, the medical staff, everybody was confused because these markings, like blue markings under his skin, would, uh, would change the shape on his feet from day to day. Um, many people thought it was something to do with uh, sorcery or something like that and because a lot of the Yungle people were totally convinced it was sorcery. Um, I went on later on to become CEO of ARDS in uh, North East Arnhem Land and in about 1996 I attended a workshop uh, on tropical disease that was run by James Cook University and Professor Rick Spears uh, and co where they started to explain some of the symptoms in relation to strong alloides and uh, started to talk about this phenomena of actually seeing tracing under the skin, especially for, for, for darker people under the, their, their feet and so forth, where, where blue markings could, could occur, occur as the worms uh, tunneled under the skin. And all of a sudden I thought back to 19, uh, 1973 and thought, well, maybe this is what uh, uh, was happening at Millingham at that time. And this old man passed away at Millingham at that time with an unknown condition as far as the Western medical world was concerned. We never thought much about the issue again uh, for a long time until members of our executive were starting to complain about particular um, uh, itches and spots they had on their body which when, when itched uh, turned into welts as big as a 50 cent piece. And we, we knew that this wasn't scabies. Uh, and, but it, it fitted the pattern of, of strong alloides. We started then as ARDS, as an organisation that's involved in health and education for younger people in North East Arnhem Land. We started to do a fair bit of research and discussion with professors all over the world uh, into, in, in, in relation to strong alloides and its effect on, on people. When we did this research, we found that uh, a lot of research had already been done in Arnhem Land even back 30 years, where some homeland centres and all that had up to 30% strong alloides rates and other research has been done by Sydney University and other places uh, just of late in the last few years where strong alloides again was found on community and, and in some cases some people were saying it could be as high as 60% in the population if in effect strong alloides is a major underlying uh, condition but, but uh, can cause uh, uh, major medical problems in relation to if uh, cortisone is given to somebody uh, with asthma and so forth uh, or people going for major operations in the south if they're carrying strong alloides with them. There were major ramifications here and we started to uh, talk it uh, through at our executive level and the executive because they had been already affected, their families had been affected and the individuals themselves had been affected started to tell ARDS that ARDS had to make this a major issue to run with. In 1998, uh, talking with uh, the chairman of ARDS and talking with other elders in Arnhem Land, uh, I'm reminded of um, a conversation we were having with some old men in Arnhem Land and uh, the, the executive members and, and uh, people were shocked to find out that there might be another little uh, worm that's in, the, that's in the Arnhem Land which can cause disease and and cause sickness and even maybe lead to complications that could lead to death. Uh, people were, were wanting to know about it straight away. They wanted to know about it and when we showed them some of the research that in actual fact that uh, quite a few of the, the populations are already carrying that disease. The executive said from about 1998 on that, uh, that the, uh, getting stronger lodges recognised by the mainstream medical services in the Northern Territory had to become a major issue with the uh, with ARDS. Now this would not have been an issue if uh, when we first raised the issue with uh, with the authorities in Darwin and uh, so on, uh, if the authorities in Darwin would have recognised this straight away and said yes this is a problem if up to 60% of younger people in North East Arnhem are carrying strong alloides, 
then we need to look at it. But unfortunately, we've, we've had nothing but, you could almost say, aggressive opposition to, to our stance is standing with the people, our members, and advocating their right to be freed from this worm and their, and their families to be freed, freed from uh, carrying strong alloides and freed from uh, transmitting strong alloides and giving it to their children. So ARDS remains committed at the moment and uh, this, this website you're going to look at is to try and pull together the body of evidence around the world and also some other uh, information and stories to be used as a resource for medicos, health workers, whatever, throughout the tropical parts of the world and also in Australia so that this issue can be taken up by all authorities in Australia and we hopefully, hopefully, we can actually uh, eliminate uh, strong alloides from the population of Yuma people in Arnhem Land but also in other indigenous, commu indigenous communities in the tropics and the subtropic region so that uh, strong alloides is no longer an under, underlying factor as part of the health load that Aboriginal people have to carry. Uh, we are happy to talk to anybody in relation to support of this project that ARDS is running. Uh, we have received no funding from government to help us uh, run this project in, and we are using internal funding uh, at the moment to, to fund this website, the connections to this website and to also develop uh, radio programs and a strongly, Stronger Lodi's video. We are, we're looking for support from anybody, corporate or government uh, or individual to help us uh, rid um, Arnhem Land and maybe Australia of this uh, is, uh, I don't mind saying killer worm, this uh, worm that doesn't need, not, need to be here and definitely doesn't need, need to be uh, transmitted to the younger generation. We believe the, uh, the treatment and, uh, and probably eliminating of, of strong alloys uh, is not, not a massive program. We believe it's quite simple. Uh, the medicos know the answers to, to this but it's been proved already um, possible in some parts of Australia to actually eliminate strong alloides from whole community groups uh, and we believe that uh, this is uh, clearly possible in Arnhem Land. So anybody who can help us, support us, we're looking for funds, we're looking for support in kind. All our projects at the moment, our radio projects, our, our video project on strong alloides and our advocacy program around strong alloides is uh, all being run by with the uh, ARDS, ARDS um, hard-earned monies, uh, internal monies. Um, we are looking for sponsors and helpers in this. Uh, we'd be happy to talk to anybody. Contact us uh, on the phone numbers and, uh, and email addresses that can be found on this site. Thank you for listening.